soggy. Kids, yeah. Kids are harbingers of the Kids plague. are disgusting. <laughs> Megan in the restricted section. Today we're doing the Founding Fathers book tag. Oh boy. Even though it's way past Independence Day, but that's okay. But whatever. We're still patriotic. America, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> super, super patriotic Bald over eagles here. and shit. Fucking beer and flags and stuff. Speaking of fucking beer, we're also going to be drinking Summer Ale by Sam Adams. You know, we thought Samuel Adams was pretty appropriate for this tag, so... Definitely. Yeah, and this is a beer we've already had many times, I think, but... Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good, nice, light... Summery. Summer ba beer. Summer burr. And we were tagged by Fevered Ego. Yep. And uh, the creator of this tag is Steve Donahue. Yes. So we'll put both of their videos below. And let's get into it. Let's just do it. Let's do this. All right. <clears throat> the first one is George Washington. Name a book that's big, dumb, monstrous, monstrously overvenerated, and contemptibly sterile. That's quite specific, Steve. <laughs> it is. Um, so what did you pick for this? Well, I think we both picked the same one. Yeah. Yeah, we both went with A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. It's a big ass book, much bigger than it needed to be. Way bigger, in my opinion. <laughs> At least two hundred pages bigger than um, it needed to be. Yeah, and also over venerated, in my opinion, as well. I think sterile because it loses its emotional impact to me because so much happens that instead of being like a really moving, touching novel, it's like yeah, more I agree. like, and it, then you just kind of get numb. So I think that it was pretty sterile in that aspect. Yeah. So. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, next is John Adams. Name a book that's short and compact, but that's stuffed with brilliance and arrogance. So I went Fight Club for this one. Um, I don't find it particularly brilliant, but I know a lot of people do. Um, I did find it pretty arrogant. Um, there's like an afterword from the author that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And then, so Tyler Durden's whole thing is that he's arrogant, so... I went Fight Club. Um, I went with A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Uh, I think this is a pretty brilliant little book. Mm -hmm. I really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, the characters are arrogant. Yes. Or the, the main character is arrogant. So that's where I went with that. I don't know that the book itself is really that arrogant. Maybe a little bit with his um, made-up language that, yeah. he went, <laughs> that he did. I would say maybe a little bit But, that um, yeah, the main character, Alex, that's his name, right? Alex, yeah. The mm -hmm. main character, Alex, is definitely pretty arrogant, arrogant little shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, that was my pick. Um, the next one is Thomas Jefferson. Name a book that's undeniably brilliant, but also prissy and wimpy, with extra points if it's thumpingly hypocritical. Uh, I went, I had struggled a little bit with this one, but I went with Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. Um, I think it's brilliant. I know a lot of people think this is a terrible book. I don't know. I really liked it at the time that I read it anyway. I thought it was great. Um, but it is, I guess I could, you could say Prissy and Wimpy, the vampires are a little, they're, a little they're not as prissy as Twilight vampires. No. But, like... Um, Louis, that's the main... Louis. Louis's pretty... Pretty prissy. Pretty prissy. I've never actually read that book, but I have seen the movie. What happened to mine? It's all fucked up. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't take care of my shit. <laughs> I blame your cat. That's probably accurate. She did eat a little life. And the notebook. I don't blame her for either one of those. <laughs> um, um, I went with Zone 1 by Colson Whitehead. Um, I would say brilliance may be like an over, like a, a little bit of a hyperbole, but Colson Whitehead is a really good writer. Um, the writing in this book is really good, but it's a zombie novel, and it takes place over the course of three days, and really there's not like a ton of action or 
like zombie action in particular in it. So it's a good book, it's decent, um, but it's a pretty tame zombie novel. So maybe a little wimpy, I wouldn't necessarily say prissy, but. Uh, next is Thomas Paine. Name a book that's incredibly readable, but not as well known as it should be, and that smells really bad. Okay. Um, I chose The Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filer for this one. Um, I don't know that it smells bad, um, <laughs> or why that's a requirement for this <laughs> pick, unless Thomas Paine is known for being stinky. I guess stinky. Thomas Paine was a smelly dude. Uh, whatever. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I love this book. I think this book is really awesome and really brilliant. It's really well done. Um, and I think that everyone should read it. So. Um, I went with a book called Who is Teddy Villanova by Thomas Berger. Um, this was a total cover buy for me. Um, <laughs> it's a cool cover. The cover has a cityscape with two guns as <laughs> buildings, and I just, it just sold. Yeah, sold. I mean, it's a pretty awesome cover. <laughs> um, this is, I've never heard anyone talk about this book ever. Like, I I've never either. heard anyone anyone mention this, but it's a satire uh, of a, a, like, a detective book, so it's very, like, noir. Is it like but a... But it's also ridiculous. Day walked in one night, kind of like... It's kind of like that. It's ah. mostly like the 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 cliche of like the detective who's like down on his okay. luck and he's about to like lose his uh, business or whatever. Um, but it's maybe not super readable because it does have like a ton of highfalutin language. Like basically, he takes like the detective novel thing and just like totally amplifies it and it goes, goes way, way over, the over the top with it. But um, it was really funny and ridiculous and like half the time, but so much, it's very zany and just like, <laughs> what the fuck is happening most of the time. But um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I was like, money well spent on that cover. And it's not really smelly either. It smells like an old book. Which is a good I smell. got it used, so mm -hmm. yeah. All right. The next one is Benjamin Franklin. Name a Johnny-come-lately book, something that jumped on a bandwagon and ended up hijacking the bandwagon. Um, I went with The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin, um, sort of as a joke, <laughs> because I liked when, um, I buddy read this with Erica from The Perks of Books, and she compared it to a Nicholas Sparks novel, <laughs> and I really liked that comparison, so I'm going to say it jumped on the Nicholas Sparks bandwagon. Nice. And kind of did hijack it, because most people look at Nicholas Sparks and are like, ugh, Nicholas Sparks, but everybody fucking loves this A.J. Fickery book. Except for you. Except for me. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the worst book ever, but <laughs> it definitely was like, just killing someone off for the sake of killing someone off kind of yeah. thing, which I'm not into. No, it's pretty lame. Um, I went with Fifty Shades of Grey because it jumped on the Twilight bandwagon and then kind of started its own bandwagon. Yeah. So, yeah, like bored housewives everywhere just jumped all over that shit. Yeah. Yep. All right, next is Paul Revere. Name a book that's known for only a small part of its overall length. Um, I went with 1984 by George Orwell for this one because even people who've never read this book um, know what Big Brother is, and Big Brother is a pretty, I mean, there's a TV show called Big Brother, right. and like it's a pretty well-known thing, so, and that's just a small part of this entire book. Uh, I went with Carrie by Stephen King. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually read it. Um, I've seen both the original and the remake. Really? Movie. Yes. I haven't seen the remake. I've only seen the original. Um, but I, I don't. I went with that because I feel like everybody knows the iconic, like her getting blood poured on her <laughs> at the prom scene. Yeah. But I don't know that most people know that much more about it. Right. So I went with that. <laughs> I feel like that's pretty solid. Um, the next one is Alexander Hamilton. Name a book that's pretty and eloquent, but has ideas and assumptions that make you uncomfortable. 
Uh, didn't we both choose the same one for this too? We did. Yeah, yeah we both chose One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. Uh, this book is fantastic. Great. I absolutely loved it. Awesome book. But there is a lot of sexism. Tons. Especially, it's mentioned that a character should be raped to, to get put her put in her place. place. Yeah. Which is really fucked up. Not There's cool. also some no. racism. Yeah, lots of racism. Yeah, every black person in this book is depicted as either abusive or just a buffoon. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, lots of stuff to make you feel uncomfortable. But Very uncomfortable. still, brilliant book. Yeah, I still love that book. Still loved it. Yeah. This is John Hancock. Name the most expensive and utterly useless book that you can think of or that you own. For this one, I said probably any book I bought in college um, as a textbook. I still have them. They were ridiculously expensive. I don't know how that whole... I mean, I think that whole market is absurd. Like, mm -hmm. how can they get away with charging out the ass for these books that you're going to use for one class and then not be able to sell back? Like, right. that's absurd. Um... So yeah, pretty much any of those textbooks because I have not probably ever referred back to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if this book was particularly expensive. Probably not, or I wouldn't have bought it. But I'm going with this copy of uh, the works of Victor Hugo that I have. Um, because it's, it's kind of useless. I mean, it's pretty. It's very pretty. It's really pretty, and I use it as like a decoration. But it's so big and clunky and uncomfortable. The pages are super thin, like by the Bible. pages. And they're gilded too. <laughs> yeah. That I'm probably never actually going to read anything out of it. But it's like if I I've read Les Miserables before, but if I ever which I do want to read the Hunchback of Notre Dame, but if I ever do, I'll probably get a different copy of it. Yeah. And read it from somewhere else because this is just like It's clunky. Ugh. But it's beautiful. Yeah. So it's it's fairly useless. <laughs> uh, the next one is King George the Third. Name a book that provoked enormous unexpected consequences. I went with the Satanic Verses by Salman Rushdie. Um, this book caused a lot of protests among Muslims, and also the supreme leader of Iran uh, called for Salman Rushdie's assassination <laughs> because of this book. So pretty that's some pretty big consequences there. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'd imagine that he probably didn't expect that to happen. Probably I not. Don't, I don't know. Maybe he did, but I doubt it. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, mine caused a different type of consequence. So I went with Twilight um, because, because of this book, not only did we end up with Fifty Shades of Grey, but we ended up with more of these books and then the stupid fucking movies that I can't <laughs> stop hearing about even now. So thanks, this book. <laughs> thanks, this book. We also <laughs> got the, like... Sissification of vampires. Right? <laughs> Sparkly, stupid vampires. Is that offensive to say? I don't know. I'm sorry if we offended any vampires. Yeah, yeah and vampire everything. Like, after that, it was like the even the TV shows and shit. Vampire, vampire, vampire diaries vampire. and true blood. Mm -hmm. and, and the yeah, last one is. Should we cheers? Let's cheers. Samuel Adams. Hey. Uh, name a book that does all the work, does it beautifully and reliably, and gets none of the credit. All right. So for this one, I went with We by Yevgeny Zemyatin. Um, this was a dystopian novel that was written in the 20s. And I think that when most people think of like, or maybe in my experience, when most people think of like the father of dystopian novels, they think of 1984. Um, but this was kind of the book that George Orwell, I guess, was inspired by to write 1984. So this is like the granddaddy of dystopian novels <laughs> but and it does it really well I really enjoyed this book um, this book made me question if 1984 was still my favorite so it's a good book dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Um, I went with All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr because I feel like it's a better version of The Book Thief <laughs> That's right. You heard and it. And I mean, this is a pretty, I mean, a lot of people love this book too, and it is pretty talked about, but not as much as The Book Thief. Like, yeah. The Book Thief 
people rave and rave about that mm -hmm. one, and you see it everywhere. And there's a movie. I don't think there's a movie of this that I know of. Or I don't know if they plan to make a movie of it or anything. But anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there were a lot of sort of similarities between the two books. Mm -hmm. I mean, not really, but I don't know. I think they're maybe the same type of book. Kind of. In the same family. Yeah, I mean, not to say that all, you know, World War II books are the same. But, no. But they were fairly similar, I think, but I just, I loved this one so much more. Like, I thought this one was beautifully written. Um, we did read this for my book club and nobody else liked it. <laughs> I don't think you were there I don't think the I went to that one, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you read it, but um, everyone else was kind of like... I think the language in it is, can be kind of flowery, but oh. I like flowery language. I bought it. <laughs> so. I have that book on my Kindle. I should read it. Yeah. yeah, but I thought that this was a really beautiful book and was well done, and the book Thief was just like, blah, blah, blah. blah. The writing in the book Thief just bothered me so much. Like... The story was nice, and, mm -hmm. like, it was a beautiful story, but I hated the writing. That's fair. I liked The Book Thief, but I, it isn't anything that I would rave about. I didn't love it. Uh, yeah, that's it, though. Yeah, so that's all for that's the questions. The um, that's the thing that we did. So. <laughs> Should we tag anyone? I feel like this was supposed to be, like, a 4th of July tag, and it's way past the 4th I feel of like, July. Yeah, I feel like we're kind of done with it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It does seem like kind of a festive tag, and now I, I feel like we, yeah, maybe. Um, is, what's what's the next patriotic holiday? 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 Um, what's coming? Kind of, Labor Day? Is that patriotic? I, I guess. When's President's Day? That's past, isn't it? Yeah, that's like what is that? May or March or I don't know. May? I don't recall. Fuck if I know. Fuck if I know. Um, we have Thanksgiving, which is the day we fucked over the Indians. Oh, that's pretty patriotic. Yeah. Subjugate yeah. other races. That's what we do, apparently. It's the American it's way. The American way. So, uh, we're not really going to tag anyone specifically. But if you feel um, like doing this, you can do it. Yeah, do yeah. it. Have fun with it. If you're really into the founding fathers. American history and shit. I can still recite the uh, preamble to the Constitution. That's pretty impressive. Thanks, Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock is the shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ser That's why I can recite the whole thing. I liked the one where it talked about how a bill becomes a law. Mm -hmm. That's the I'm one just I... a bill. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm only a bill. I always liked the one about electricity. Oh, yeah. Electricity. Electricity. <laughs> oh, Schoolhouse Rock. That's amazing. What I else? did want to point out to everyone, though. I, I grew up here in southern Missouri. My social studies teacher in sixth grade said George Washington. <laughs> That's how she said it. George Washington. I grew up in central Michigan, and my grandmother said Warsh. My dad says Warsh. She also called the Warsh sofa the, dishes. the Davenport. My grandma said, calls it the Davenport. Go sit on the Davenport and watch television. Yeah. All right, Grandma Nash, I'll get on that. Yep. And she thought sofa sounded pretentious. Or like Davenport, Davenport sounds, sounds pretentious. pretentious. It's fine. Yeah. Especially if it's floral and covered in plastic. Yeah. We used to go to my grandma's house and watch, um, we'd watch Hee Haw sometimes. And sometimes we'd watch, uh, she had a tape of Ray Stevens, is that his name? That did The Streak. <laughs> oh yes, they call him The Streak. Nice. He plays in Branson now, I think, maybe. Because that's where careers go to die. Yeah, that's where music careers go to just the old beat people a dead horse. Old people Vegas. Branson Mo. Old people Branson Vegas. Branson Mo. Yep. Shut I think up. that's where my dad went to see Tanya Tucker yesterday. Oh really? My parents and my oldest sister went and saw Tanya Tucker, and probably in Branson, I assume. I don't know. I took my mom to the Titanic Museum in Branson, and my mom was super geeked. She loves the Titanic. She was super excited. And so we went there, and then at the end of it, I was like, so what'd you think? And she was like, uh... Really? <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> I was like, it was okay. Like, Mom, that's pretty much Branson. Like, that meh sound that you made. The traffic is terrible. And it's curvy and hilly. And everything's just meh. And Except it's with beer. It's nothing that special. I mean, we just got it because it was Sam Adams and we were doing this tag. <laughs> yeah, so it's not But anything. it's just a, I mean, it's good. Yeah. I like it. Sam Adams. I like their summer ale. It's a nice, really light, kind of 
a little citrusy, but not, not little, but not strong. It says it's a wheat ale brewed with lemon peel and grains of paradise. What the fuck are grains of paradise? <laughs> did you put sand in this beer, Sam Adams? Because if you did, fuck you. <laughs> um, no, I don't really care too much for Sam Adams usually. I like this beer from Sam Adams, but like it's not my favorite. I think all their beers are fine. They're <laughs> like mediocre. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. I do like their porch rocker a lot, but it's seasonal and it's it's not out for it's a limited. It is. It's release, like a so it's not thing. out for very long. Yeah, it's gone now. It's not out anymore. I th and I feel like it's more of a summery drink. I, I wish they too. had it all summer, but they yeah. Yeah. don't. Anyway, so, any usual. Yeah, that's gonna be it for us. Yes. Today so we'll post some links down below where mm -hmm. you can find us both elsewhere on social media. And if you're not subscribed, then do, it. do that. We're getting so close to a thousand, guys. So close. So close to a thousand. We don't so want. Close. We don't want to want it, but we, but want, we it. want it. I don't want to be excited <laughs> about it, but I am. Um, yeah. And we'll do something cool for a thousand subscribers. Yeah. We don't know what yet, but we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll do something cool. Yeah. If you guys have suggestions, by the way, yeah. let us know. Yeah. If there's anything you want to see us do for a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Let us know. Nothing weird though. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing too weird. <laughs> Nothing weird. Um. Yeah, and uh, thanks everyone for watching, mm -hmm. and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.